episode is brought to you by GameFound. Create a free pledge manager for your project. All welcome right, back. everybody. Welcome. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. I'm Mike Delicio. Welcome to our weekly show. We take a look at Kickstarter and sometimes GameFound projects, although there's more and more of those are coming from yeah. what I hear. So we just announced a big one coming, a, a, le a legacy style game mm. from uh, Lucky, Lucky Duck. Duck. That's coming to GameFound. But for now, most of the projects are still on Kickstarter. So mm -hmm. that's what we're looking at. I would like to point out here, someone just emailed me about this, and they, there was an article written on our website, doesn't matter what website it was, about Kickstarter ruining expansions. Oh, yeah, I heard about that, yes. Okay. It's a somewhat nonsensical article, but, uh, I mean, some of the points in it were correct. Uh, games are coming out with a whole bunch of expansions at one time. Mm -hmm. um, well, the article started by saying, the good old days, we made a game, and then it was fixed by expansions. That's not the good old days. <laughs> I don't want that either. Yeah. Anyhow, I think today should prove that a bit stupid that Kickstarter is ruining expansions because expansions there's a couple several yeah. expansions are coming out on Kickstarter here by themselves mm -hmm. as a follow up to a game and, and that's my opinion on that and after a significant amount of time too so yeah all right well let's take a look here um, and let's jump right into it so we're starting right. with journey to I think the voiceover said he cry -a. is that I thought I watched the I video. I watched it and I forget what they said, but yes, they do say it in there near the beginning somewhere. I think it's Ecry. So this is an adventure board game. Um, and I'm gonna start out by saying I hate the art. Okay? Ditto. Ditto. Okay. But again, art is subjective, blah blah sure. blah. We're told that we're not supposed to be giving our opinions on art. No? Okay. The board looks okay. It's an adventure game. There's not as many adventure games as you might think. There's a lot of dungeon crawl games. Right. There's a lot of, you know, war games. There's not as many adventure games. I, I like that concept. Also, it seems like recently-ish, uh, these types of games, they're trying to make them DM-less or GM-less. And this is not. This is one where one player is going to be the GM. Uh, so I think that's interesting. It's kind it's of an old game school. master, by yeah, the way, sorry. someone who runs the game. Right. Yeah, I, I apologize. Yes. Um, so I mean, that's interesting that they're kind of going back to that uh, that kind of old school model a little bit. I don't know if it's old school. Feels. I like think it, it looks. I mean, there's. I looked at it. There were walls and walls of text on yes. every card. The cards certainly don't look great. I think mm -hmm. they look dated. Mm -hmm. I agree about the the adventure idea and in fact I almost prefer when an adventure game really really dials down on the combat. You just let me explore like the exploration uh, yes. very much yes. first you know. Right. You really gotta play Destinies. <laughs> if combat is yeah. even in there make it a very much a secondary idea. This is they, they, there's a good amount of fighting, and they show monsters and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So I don't know if I wouldn't call this a, a pseudo dun dungeon crawler. You know, I know you're outside, but mm. no, I wasn't loving this either. I wasn't loving it. <sighs> there's a lot of aspects of it I do like. I like that, you know, the two women from Germany. It's their first game that they're yeah. trying to do. That's I like cool. that aspect. That's cool. I I like the idea of it. I just the, again, the art is very subjective, I suppose. But yeah, and and. You know, look, it's probably a smaller scale project, but uh, how is it doing? Uh, I don't think they've quite funded it yet. It has not funded yet. Okay. It's a few thousand away from being funded. All right, well, they can still get there. I mean, there's still some time, right? How much time do we got left? Four days. I think they're going to I, I think they're going to make it. I this think they're going to happen. I think it will yeah, find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they'll make it. For me, I'm not a big fantasy fan either, mm. so this all looks samey to me. Yeah. It's like, oh, another fantasy world, but... If you are a fan of fantasy and you like this kind of stuff, it looks solidly sort of put together. Mm. I like the little world, and I did like, one thing I did like is that their little mountain that you build, like the story as you're traveling to this place, yeah. and that seemed neat. Yeah, that's a neat like idea. Like the way they put that forward, I was like, okay, I like what you're saying here about what the, the background story is. Right. Alrighty, All right, well, let's jump to something you can play by yourself. Paperback Adventures. By the way, folks, if this line butts in on the, the screen, that's a, for some reason, Kickstarter needs to keep telling me that they'll be down for an hour tomorrow. But that right. probably will save them a lot of headache. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. They'll still get a bunch of emails, though. Mm -hmm. All right, so Paperback from Tim Fowers. Now, Tim Fowers is a true 
one man company. Yeah. He's been a one man company. He refuses to like expand beyond that. I mean, he might have someone else with him now. I might but he argue doesn't... two man because Ryan Goldberry's art is a big part of his appeal too. True, but I think he hires him. I don't think Ryan yeah. works for the company. I think, yeah, I think you're right. Anyway, point. Paperback is a deck building word game that I enjoyed. They mm -hmm. came out with Hardback, a sequel to it, and he's done a few other games. The Burgle Brothers. Burgle Brothers. That's yeah. probably, that might be his most popular game, but Paperback obviously has some followers sure. to raise this amount of money. I do like the game trays. <laughs> That's a yes. weird placement for it. it is. Tim Fowers presents game trays. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to be that, but yeah. That's a, yeah. It's yeah. a, oh, that's man, a, yeah, Game yeah. Trace is like way up in the top there. Anyway, so this is a solo deck building roguelike because if you stick the word roguelike into something now, money! Yeah, that's definitely a big buzzword right it now. Really it really is. Yeah. Word game. I'm actually not opposed to this, although he's going to have to persuade me on this why I wouldn't just play this as an app. Sure. A word game, a solo word game feels like it should be an app to me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was very kind of surprised by this because I played Paperback back in the day and I played it uh, solo and, and I thought it was clever. I enjoyed it. Hmm. Uh, but it was not something I came back to over and over again. Play paperback solo? Yeah, yeah, you can. That seems so um, boring. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a puzzle. You know, it's a word puzzle. And if you don't I like guess. word puzzles, it would be boring. Yeah. Like but book, this though. is obviously doing something <laughs> <laughs> very, very different. And hey, I'm. I'm uh, Wait, is that custom play, Matt? Just a bunch of squares. Squares. Now, it's doing tremendously well for a solo only word game, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, 270 yeah. odd. And well, those. Apparently, you can play it multiplayer, but I think well, it's really Well, they, they unlock the two player mode. Yeah, I don't, I don't love that type this of thing. This is so stupid. Yeah. I'm sorry. This seems. Mm -hmm. There's nothing about this I like. I you do don't like those, the art? I do like, yeah, the art's amazing. I love Tim Fowers. I, I, sure, I mean, That game again, trace looks cool, though. It does. I will this say that. This one actually looks cool. It looks functional. It looks like it actually I'm sure helps I know, the players. I know, I know, I know I'm in the minority here. Mm -hmm. But a solitaire, roguelike word game? <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I'm not feeling it. You know what I mean? I it just might seems... like it. I like roguelike games. Yeah, I definitely. I'm, I like I'm... word games, although I like playing them with other people. You by yourself, a word game is called a puzzle. Correct. And this is going to be a puzzle type game, right? Just like even uh, Burgle Brothers has got a puzzle element to it, and and. You know, my concern, and it's it's basically based off of the last Burgle Brothers game, is that I just hope that they don't get too caught up with the packaging and keep the functionality there. Right. Because I think there can be a little bit, sometimes it can get to the edge of gimmickry. Uh, and, and Well, I think when you're making a solitaire uh, adventure-like rogue word game, you've hit the edge of gimmickry. Yeah, we'll see. I know you're, 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 you're not into the whole concept. I get that. I'm but not. I'm I not a huge solo guy, but I still might I'm also not much of a word game this. fan. Okay? Yeah, There's I do that. like word games, and obviously I like solo games, so I'm hoping this is good, and I think that the I mean, art is fantastic. My he's thing, making I, bank. Yeah. So. My thing I don't like in this, and this I know it's a weird thing, is I don't like the, the theme being trying to shoved into a word game. Like, yeah. you're wiping the goo off, the alien goo off your weapons, yada yada. Right. I spell the word boot. <laughs> All right, back in. That's right. always a little weird to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know that it needed to be, but I, I don't mind this. I like it. I think it looks cool, but I just usually play a word game with my wife. Mm -hmm. we, we like paperback. Yeah, you could play I, a two-player apparently, but <laughs> I could see a play. I mean, I, well, again, sure. yeah. I'm not a big word game fan, but yes, playing a word game with somebody else, sure. At that point, you're playing Scrabble or some variant of it. Mm -hmm. Solitaire just seems I don't know. Like do you, you like do you like crossword puzzles? Cuz that's a solitaire word puzzle. Activity. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Do now, you? Do you like crosswords? Yeah, sure. Do you like roguelike crossword puzzles? <laughs> Does that mean like when I die somewhere along the way I have to start again? Cuz I really I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> and it seems stupid and like super just It's a buzzword that people yeah, are buzzword, using yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It's it's being overused very much. All right. We're, let's move on. The sound box. <laughs> Go back to the word. <laughs> a cooperative party game where you listen to your friends performing weird sounds as they try to make you guess all sorts of concepts. I've already reviewed two games that are similar to this yes. in the past. They weren't. One was from Haba. This is from Horrible Guild. I would have completely disregarded this, and I'm still wasn't. really close to completely disregarding it. However, 
the design team. I, I mean, know it's crazy. I mean, this is they did what? Wa this is the wavelength, uh, or no, no, no. This is the railroading. Kings railroading. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, Lorenzo Silva's done quite a few things. Yeah, I. I have much higher hopes for this. I, I like don't. the idea of this because it sounds like a sound version of um, When I Dream. It's simultaneous, you know yes, that. It's just a bunch of people making different noises at the Is same time. Is everybody at the same time shouting at you? Yes. I know that bugs you. Mm -hmm. This sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, this, I'll but, take the word <laughs> game, the solitaire yeah. word game, ten yeah. times out of ten over uh, this. I think I think I'm gonna like this one actually. What? I think this is a game I'll play and then I'll be like, I'm good for okay. six months. Oh, so Tom, you know right, it, yeah. right now, with no one else that you have to even compete with, make noises only that convey sumo re sumo fighter. Ooh. <laughs> Go ahead. Ooh, 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 ooh. King Kong. Oh, that's easy. That's all. No, no, I'm guessing King Kong based off the oh. noises you're making, not sumo <laughs> fire. The discovery of fire? <laughs> it's the same <laughs> noise you just made for... <laughs> Hang on. My it's got to it's, it's be like an experience. Yeah, it's There's an experience. only 45 words, uh, sound that's words, what I'm too. So. I mean, it's not, some of these no, seem tremendously goal. difficult. Oh yeah, okay, there's, but there's not that many, there's 110. right? That's still not that many. Yes, my favorite thing about this game is the little Pac-Man meeple. That, that I'm down with, but otherwise, I think this sounds like complete and utter chaos, and I'm not feeling it. Uh, this sounds like a party I don't want to be invited to. Do you, you know remember what I mean? that that medical game that I don't think yeah. you ever played it a I long time not. ago, where there was eight people. We all took oh, a room. Yeah, we yeah, played I at played the that. gathering, and you're like split the up the Roberto Frog game, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And I played. I was like, that was so much fun, <laughs> and I'm never playing it again. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. That's what this feels a little yeah, like, yeah, right? Like Doctor Panic or something like that. Yeah, yes. exactly. It. Doctor yes. Panic. <laughs> yeah, I played it, and I'm with you. I played it once. Never gonna play it again. Right. Right. Woohoo! <laughs> cube be checker with sets. You, Tom, this is as far as I got <laughs> on this page. <laughs> Did you look at the video? <laughs> no. So here's the thing. This is undeniably something that I find stupid. This idea of the checkers. The little cubes are kind of cool though, because yeah, they're not that little. They're actually pretty big. So when you play, when I played the video. I was like, oh, okay, I, I kind of like those, but not as a checker set. Also, if you could scroll down, that's a good look right there. Oh, hi. Yeah, okay, I hate that, but I'll <laughs> tell you what. I would play this as a checker set. I just don't know why all the symbols need to be on there. Yes, there's a crown king. Mm -hmm. And they all, here's the thing. They don't even look like good gelatinous cubes. Nah. No. If they looked better, if they were some of the ones we've seen years earlier, I just thought this was humorous, and as soon as I saw it, I'm, I said I'm sticking it I in. I don't, like, if you put this on the table, like, my mind does not automatically go gelatinous cubes. <laughs> no, no that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah it it's I, just I, like, like, oh, this is a weird little chest set with dice that right. look like dice. Tom, if you had to make a sound to describe a gelatinous cube, that's pretty good. I'd go with that one. All right. Let's, let's, let's wash our minds clean here now with a bit of Mark Street. Ooh. Here we go. This week's Spotlight is brought to you by Don't Panic Games. In Fighters of the Pacific, relive the fury of air and sea combat in the Pacific during World War II. Direct each plane, multiple fighter and bomber squadrons to lead attacks on the enemy carriers and island bases. No dice, no rulers, only dozens of planes and ships. A fast-paced and streamlined game mechanic that plunges you in the heart of the battle. Move each plane individually on a hex grid when you maneuver to get an enemy plane in your sights, it must try to dodge or else take damage. Some planes can use torpedoes and bombs to destroy ships and ground installations. Stay in formation to keep the initiative and dominate your opponent. Each plane has its own attributes in terms of speed, armor, and special abilities. Each piece is illustrated as close as possible to its historical model to maximize your immersion. The Fighters of the Pacific series includes a core game and two expansions. The core game contains everything you need to play, giving you 10 scenarios and hours of gameplay as you battle over the Pacific Ocean. So please, go check out the campaign, which is now live on Kickstarter. All right, so just like that game you saw, Pacific War, now we look at Catastrophe. A game of nine lives. This game's making 100,000. What are you gonna say? Uh, I'm going to say that there are going to be some people that are very unhappy with their purchase. I don't know. I don't think so because they know exactly what they're getting. The video. Yeah, I did watch the video. After you watched you, after it. You I told you, you got to see the video. After you implored me to. I told you. I, I don't think people will be unhappy because they tell you exactly what you're getting. They do. And what you are getting is 
shouting meow at each other until someone breaks. Right. And uh, if this person shut my the other one, like stacking little cubes, stacking cubes, yeah. and sort of. I don't. I mean, there was like a bunch of like sort of activities. Mini, they call them mini did. games, which are just sure. Yeah. Um, but this looks quite quite bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I know that sometimes for for British people, when I say quite bad, <laughs> they think it means like mediocre. So let me restate that. <laughs> yeah. This is a steaming pile of garbage. You get that, Dan? <laughs> Okay. Stop. Paws out. Claws out. <laughs> no, again, you can't tell him to stop doing it. He made a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and here's the thing. I, I've been the one that's that's been the you know champion of the cats, I suppose, just because I don't hate them. I love I love kitties, but I have zero interest in this. Just throwing cats onto a game is not going to get my my attention. They they really stepped over the line into like manipulative. Though. Yeah, it's I agree. I think right? it's like here's a here's a garbage game. What do we put in this? Right. To get a bunch of suckers to be like, yeah. oh, kitty cats. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I. It really feels that way. I'm sorry. It does. You no, know, it looks. It the looks game itself. Rough. It looks just, rough. I'm sorry, it just doesn't look any good. There's, uh, I, I like, can't spot any I like that redeemable board. quality. I like that board. I really do. Okay. I think that board well, looks good. And I'll say this. It says first created. But all mm -hmm. the points for that board are taken away from by the words Grim Reaper. Reaper. You just lost three points with me. Yeah, well, I get it. But it's a nice-looking page. The project looks like it's been put together well um, for a first created don't project. Don't those cats look Photoshopped, though? I don't like that art. Those cats look terrifying, Tom. That's what they look. None of these cats look good. I, I mean... They're, they're, the placement of their eyes are off. They look freaky. As yeah, they, these cats have uh, been through some type That's of not alternative a cat. wormhole. <laughs> Uh, last what one is on going the right. on? That's not a cat. Is that no. some sort of weird lion? <laughs> it's a griffin. I don't it know It looks what's like happening. a lion mixed with a goat face. <laughs> oh, we've got a welder cat. Okay, that's, that's a good the look. best cat. The is best that Robo cat? cat? That's Robo cat. Direct me to your friskies. <laughs> all right, all right. Again, there's not really, really a point. No. We're only talking about this one because. Um, you know, it's a, it's a Kickstarter doing well. It's making a bunch We're of money. We're not the audience. Harry Some Potter. people love it. The video. you got to watch the video, <laughs> though, folks. Um, you'll know everything you need to know from the video. That's a good thing. That's correct. And, also, and it is a very well-produced video. It is. Also, I can confirm you will never get those three minutes of your life back. I've tried. I've been trying since you, I watched the video. you never get your minutes of the life back. Okay, let's move that's on. What, that's a thing for Tommy. All right, here's an expansion. Yes. Tussie Mussie, expansion collection by Elizabeth Hargrave. So Tussie Mussie um, from uh, Button, Button Shy, Shy Games. Mm -hmm. Very small game. All their games are 18 cards, I think. Yes, yes, that's correct. Generally, yes. Yeah, and then in this one, it's essentially a set collection game where you're collecting some plants and you score points at it's the like end. It's like an I split, you choose thing. Yeah, yeah. something like that. It's right. cute. It I, works well. Um, I wouldn't call it great, but it's a solid game. It's hard to have an 18-card game be great. Right. Well, except for Sprawlopolis. Yes. But um, Tussie Mussie is... One of the best games that they've come out with. I agree. It's very it's popular. Definitely in their upper tier. I think just below Sprawlopolis and maybe Agropolis. You'll have to check my review later in the week to see that. But yeah, I like Always it. Always selling this That's guy. That's right. You Always like be that? closing. You like that? Uh, Eric Summerer taught me this game. Okay. Are we supposed to be impressed by that? <laughs> wait, wait. Let me. Let me. I don't think you heard me. Eric Summerer. All right. Taught me so this. how many? Oh, the voiceover guy. Correct. Yeah. Oh, so how many cards really come cool. in each expansion here? <laughs> Um, Several. Is it six per expansion? No, it can't be because this one's eight. It looks like I don't know if it's a uniform, but I do know that they're putting all of the expansions in one wallet. Which right. I okay, no, no, okay, like so it's it'll okay, be like you're right. Or so 20. it's four, six, and eight, which right. is which is eighteen. Four plus six is ten. <laughs> Stop. Plus eight. Plus eight. Is no, okay, 12, thirteen. But I was I was kind of hoping for three eighteen card expansions because yeah, yeah. then this you could is make much smaller. Yeah. yeah. No, this is this is. Uh, that being said, I would get this. Easily, sure. Three expansions for this game. Why not? And if you're like me and didn't get the original game and are interested in it, now you can also get the original game with these expansions. So here's the only thing that bothers me about this. Mm -hmm. I backed my first button shy project ever. Yeah. Some time ago, when we looked at Death Valley, right. from them. Yes. Which looked really neat. It does look neat, yeah. One of the things you could pledge for was Death Valley mm -hmm. and Tussie Mussie. Oh. I do not have that pledge yet. It hasn't delivered. Okay. Here's an expansion to a game that I don't know I like yet. 
You can or buy not. mine. You can buy Don't mine. you ever? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I also, he'll tell you, you can print and play this stuff. That's yeah. right. See. Print and play. I don't think I will. I think this is cool. <laughs> this is cool. Yeah, yeah no, is, I, I liked I, Chelsea Mussey. And, and me too, me too. I'm assuming I'll like it. Obviously, I'm back because I think I'll like it. And this yeah. looks neat. Yeah. All right. Joseph's Bal Balkowski's St. Louis. That's two games in a row where they stuck the designer's name in the yeah, title. Yeah, yeah. St. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. St. Lowe marks the return of a true wargaming classic mm -hmm. with improved rules and art. Mm -hmm. This is for you who want it. Yeah, and, and the Look video... Look at that map. The video is basically an unboxing, and it looked to me like a very much an old-school war game, yeah. but I'm guessing that if this is improved, and I'm not saying this to be crummy, if this is improved, it means that probably the original game was just maybe on a paper like map. Like a print-and-play kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Do they say it's on a mounted board now? Yes, it is on a mounted board. That's the improvement. Yeah, probably so, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not afraid to say this. Look, we, we talk about a lot of war games, and we say we admit we're not the target audience no, for that. But sure. there is some war games that look pretty nice. This is not one of them. No, looks nice. No, it they're does not, not even look nice. trying to get a new audience with this. No. This is for people who have the original game. They are appealing to the old school war gamers, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and that's apparently, okay. It's, it's, hey, that's okay. That's right. fine. If this is the if this is the kind of game they want to make, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying every game has to be. Tell you what, not every game has to appeal to me. I get that. I look that. at that player aid there, though, right now. That <laughs> makes me want to play the game. Right yeah, there. that's a lot. Sign me up. All right. I'm in. Moving on. How, how well is that doing? I'm curious. It's oh. not doing well. It's, no? it's like 105. Oh. It's, it's, doing, it's, it's doing what they want it to do. 105 yeah, backers. Yeah, yeah. Their yeah. goal is is uh, correct. And right. Like, you know, it's, it's realistic. So, yeah. That's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. You are the dungeon. <laughs> you exist on the margins. I don't know what that word means. You are brooding. The margins? Tempting and insatiable. No, like, how does a dungeon... Anyhow, guys, this was funded in 131 minutes. 131 minutes. Why would they just say just over two hours? That's what... <laughs> 131 All right, so this minutes. is another game that uses tarot cards. We talked about that. Now, this has 1,000 backers, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, but you're supposed to use your own tarot cards, I think, because it doesn't come with them. I really was very confused. <laughs> I could not figure out what this... Was I think it's one of those the video zine games. Is a voiceover yes. of basically what they wrote at the top, Correct. panning very slowly mm -hmm. over that tower illustration right, right there. Right, right. And yes. then the video's over, and I'm like, "What is this now?" Yeah, I think it's is this for really, RPG players? I believe I think it's I a think so. so. It's a I think it's a solo activity. game where you are you are the dungeon as the. <laughs> title oh, would imply. Way, way to and it, really nail that one. And you are trying to, yeah, I, I, I don't know if you're trying to kill the, you know, you're trying to entice the heroes into your dungeon, I suppose. Well, I it don't depends know. on you. You are the dungeon. I'm a dungeon that likes to throw, I don't know. Anyway, um, I think if you really want to know what the game is about, you're going to have to take you the time to, to watch the videos. Well, the let bottom. me ask this, though. They said that it needs a, a, a deck of tarot cards. Mm-hmm. Now, if it asked for a deck of normal playing cards, mm -hmm. if I went to someone's house, I'd say there's maybe a 50% chance they own a deck of cards. Sure. Not everyone does. Right. How many people own tarot cards? Unless you were kind of, unless you're using them for whatever, like fortune telling. I don't know many. Do you own a deck? Mm, and you have no. a lot of playing cards. Mm, yes. But you don't own any tarot decks. No, I do not. Yeah, it's just it's, I don't think it's a common thing to own. Yeah, I don't know. I'm honestly yeah, not I sure. I don't know. I don't know. I um. Uh, does anyone I used chat to own, own a tarot like, deck? Maybe like 15 years ago, I used to own a deck of tarot cards that was a Lord of the Rings game hmm. from a U.S. playing card company, actually. It was ah. a game, Lord of okay. the Rings themed, mm -hmm. and it happened to be also, they also were tarot cards. Ah. No, no, I get and that. And then I got rid of that game because it sucked. <laughs> Shout out to you. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't own a deck of tarot cards. Uh -huh. But again, this seems like a really quirky project. It's, yeah. I put this in the same category as I do that war game we just looked at. It's going for a this particular audience. Very, very specific. Niche. Very niche. Yes. A really, really specific audience. Right. And they've found it because they're doing well. Mm hmm. All yeah. Right. Well, Kabuki Kid has a deck of tarot cards. My wife has some tarot cards. I don't. But I but just asked if you. No, you didn't ask me. You asked Z. You just ignored me, Tom. Chat, yeah, back me up. Yeah, because you have tarot cards. <laughs> Mosaic. A story of civilization. Here's our 
this might be the biggest Kickstarter week. It's one of the biggest ones. Okay, then it's my well, pick it's of the week. The I don't care. It's definitely not the biggest because we still have a huge. There's one another to talk big about. one. Then that's my. Oh pick yeah, of you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> I'm good with that. I, I apologize Everything in advance. Everything will pale in comparison. I apologize yeah. in advance to the Polish people. Yes. All right, Mosaic uh, Story of Civilization. This is from Forbidden Games, which Glenn so Rover. far. Forbidden Games has been on point for me. Yeah. yeah. The pirate game I liked, even though it's definitely for a um, younger audience, maybe a, like a, a younger, lighter, a lighter sort of audience yeah, yeah, would be a, a word. Like, yeah. And well, I love Raccoon Tycoon. Raccoon Tycoon's also, I think, a, a, it's <laughs> just a step above a family game. I mean, yeah. I, I really like Raccoon Tycoon. I know I you don't. Think that, nah, I, I don't know. I, I really just, liked it. It didn't uh, work for me. I'll tell you. I think the cat, the cats, and the yeah, raccoons. maybe, but it was a catastrophe. That game. No. Get out. <laughs> Sorry. Get out. <laughs> at first, I was a little put off by the map on this one, but then the more I looked at it, the more I kind of got into the aesthetic and the vibe of it. It almost has like a stained glass feel that, I, that I'm kind of digging now. At first, I was like, man, I don't know if I like this kind of just colored hexes, but... When it gets up closer, and you can it see some of the detail. It does have an interesting look, yeah, like uh, it's, it's, hashtags or something. I like, like the you know, art, although cross, I noticed that. Uh, cross hatches or right. something, yeah. I noticed Glenn Drover made himself a general there. So oh, I'm out. Uh, I'm out. <laughs> um, but no, I, I like that art. I like the way the cards look. It looks like a Civilization game. It's fun. If you've yeah. seen Civilization games, they somehow tend to like, all right, you're in this for the long haul. You're going to well, be playing this boring looking game. And and they are billing it as an actual Civilization game, not a Civilization themed game, but a, you know, with all of the trappings that that involves in all about two hours, right? And so if you can do that, if you can make a legit uh, Civ game in two hours, I'm I'm interested. I've heard good things about it. Ah, wood currency tokens. Mm -hmm. I love wood currency tokens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wood tokens are... You like are, them to be wooden coins, you mean? Yeah, see, those are all wooden pieces. Mm -hmm. You've got cardboard As opposed currency to cardboard. tokens and wood I like wooden tokens. pieses. I think they feel great. They're like meeples, essentially. With yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, The screen gotcha. point. Then metal, look at those metal coins. Look at that. Those look really good, those mm -hmm. metal coins. Also very easily distinct. The right... The right the right colors for the dominations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know just it, gold is always gold. like the best, yeah, right? So yeah. it should be the highest denomination. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, and then there's miniatures, of Minis, course. Yeah, but I, I, that's, I'm not so pumped about that. Stop making the... Well, no, not that. <laughs> no, I'm going to leave it here. He, he just told Turtsy to stop. Stop it. making solo modes, David Turtsy. <laughs> no, it's the, stop making the sixth player the, the stretch gold purple. Purple should be one of the standard colors. I agree. And that's the only that's that's the only issue I have working for Mr. Tom Vassell is that I can never play purple. Anymore. I let you play purple often, actually. I think you did when I first started working. <laughs> and then you're now you're like, no. Doesn't Chris also um, want to play? No, Chris doesn't care. I'm aware. Tom gets purple. <laughs> that's okay. That's you good. know what you get? You don't get to play because there's no six players. Catastrophe. All that's right. What I anyway, this looks good. The, the mm. quality. Like, Definitely Forbidden Games quality is good. Yes, it is. Now, my only concern with this one is Glenn Drover once did a big grandiose miniature game called... Uh, oh. I'm not talking about the War Age and Parallelism, because he did all those, too. I'm talking about one he did with Mr. B Games, that oh. War Quest. War Quest was the name of it. Mm -hmm. And that's one of my few twos that I've given out. Mm -hmm. um, however, this looks a lot better than that one did. Okay. All right. Burn the spiciest game ever. Did you get that second U in there, Tom? Oh, I'm sorry. Burn. Now we're going. That's good. This is fun for game game night to grandma. That's we a bad. About, we talked about that in the, in the that's studio. That's a bad yeah, 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 phrase, yesterday. by the way. Yeah, I, I don't think it makes sense. <laughs> I, I just on a fundamental <laughs> linguistic level, I don't think it makes sense. Michael, you come to game night? No, grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's super fun for all ages, okay? From the age of game night. From the age of game night. <laughs> to the age of grandma. I will tell you one. Well, how old is grandma? 86. Yeah. How old is game night? <laughs> That's uh, three weeks at this point. I'll tell you, <laughs> one of my favorite birthdays, actually, is when I turned game night. And that was a really special day. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what game night means. <laughs> I mean, I guess okay. I think I know what now, they mean, but... <laughs> all this time, we were talking about this yeah. earlier. I don't know what it is. But I would buy these little dudes and stick them on a shelf somewhere. They're awesome. The totems are great. I really like them. The the game looks to me like an exercise in complete frustration. Can you buy just the figures? Yeah, you no, can buy you the, can game, the game, throw away everything but the part that you <laughs> well, want. I don't want that. Um, no, but you probably have to pay extra for those figures. Oh, do you? The very hot edition. Yeah, the extreme heat. 
Yeah, no, so I guess it's a speed game, basically, where you're trying to grab one of those totems, so it's got that jungle I played speed their type unicorn of killing game. It was okay. It was yeah. fine. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. So there's this, too. Maybe I'll enjoy this more. And I do like the theme of hot pepper sauce. Sure. I think the artwork's good. I think the card design looks good. I like those people. Foam I like everything about totems. it, except for... It doesn't sound like it's a great game, no. but it might be. It could be. I, I just that I don't. Play mat love... looks good. Yeah, I just don't really love the grab the thing as fast as you can games, but that's okay. I mean, I really despise that kind of game. Yeah, anyway, I don't so. hate it as much as you two. Maybe I might. This might be for you. There's a dad okay. joke challenge. No, I'm challenge. sorry, dad joke challenge. We're out there. <laughs> uh, wow, whoever lasts first has to chow down on a chili pepper. Uh, you know what this sounds like? A uh, catastrophe. <laughs> it does. All right, another expansion. Another expansion. Path of Light and Shadow Solstice. So pa this is actually a little delayed, in my opinion, well, after the original game. That's what I was getting at. I, I, I think this is a game that's had a slow burn. I think when it came out, so. it was not very well acclaimed, but... I happen to like the game. I think it's got some pretty interesting stuff. It's it's a deck building game, but not really. It's an area control, I'm not but not the really. Art, yeah, well, the art I, I wasn't. Isn't this with, done but. by the same person as Anne's End? I think it looks like the same art. Yeah, I, think so, I do Tom, not love yeah. the art, but uh, I the liked, board looks cool. Yeah, I liked the base game. It's an area control game, but you only have one. You only have one thing. You're moving around the map. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's been a while since I played, but I enjoyed it. Uh, I'm interested in, in this because, you know, it adds a, a solo variant. I'm going to play you know. the game. It showed up recently, and mm -hmm. the designer's a friend of mine, so he's been bugging me to play it. So I'm going to play I it. I think you might like it, Tom. I, I think you might. It has, a tech, it has tech trees, you know, where, so you can move up. And you know, I, again, I remember you and Sam played it way back, or at least Sam played it. Sam I did played, not I like it way it back in the, in the day. You didn't like it? And you thought it was okay, right? No, I don't think I liked it either. Okay. Uh, okay. But it's also been a very long time, so who knows? Mm. I might like it now. Another expansion! Mm -hmm. Since Kickstarter's killing them all, Lock Up Breakout expansion. Now, I like Lock Up Breakout. I, I was not expecting... No, I'm sorry. I like, lock, like lock, lock Up. up. Not yeah. Breakout. Breakout's expansion. I didn't expect it to get an expansion. I didn't particularly think it needed one. If it did get one, I would have said... Give me more cards. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I didn't necessarily... I, it felt like a complete game as it was. That being said, they added another board, and I was like... They did. Maybe. They did. And it doesn't look like they've changed the actual like mechanics of the game much at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which is good. They've added one more little character. That ah, but that is a lot of... I don't know. I, I was trying to figure out from here, do you... Do you go down into that dungeon? Like yes. you move it's no, not no, another you, worker placement you, spot. You do you have you have a different worker down there that's represented by a lantern. Yeah, so then you're moving through. You're moving that I'm lantern okay with through. that. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I, I like to lock up and and, um, and then it does have new item cards, sure, which sure. is what I want it. Mm hmm Um yeah, now did they make it so that the box holds the original game that's again? That's a big thing for me because I would not necessarily think That game I, does not if I remember correctly, I don't remember there being a ton of extra space. Well, because you had the plastic, uh, you know, little things to keep your tokens yeah, in. He's and... done this. Okay, I'm glad to see this picture here. It shows the board. That board doesn't look as big now no. that you put it next to this other board. You fold it in half too. So. Ah, this might be this might be what I want. Then this is. I really like lockup. Mm. Sealed excellence. Yeah, look at that. Um, there's my review. What? Spencer's in jail. Spencer's in jail for his review. That's a shame. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I oh, haven't oh, said oh, anything because... Whoa, whoa. Go ahead. I did not see this. Acrylic tiles? Oh, yeah. Just add 15 bucks. That's worth it for acrylic tiles. That's totally My worth tiles it. are already beat up. Yeah. You know, you need to actually. Throw, I'm getting it just for this. You need to this. throw that game out, actually. <laughs> Carry. No, sorry. On your desk? <laughs> Is that what you told me? Is that what a Maybe. garbage game is? All right, go ahead. Tell us how much you don't like lockup. I hate it. No, I mean, yeah, I don't have anything to add. I don't like this game. It's definitely the third of the whole, like, role player and the, the roll and write one. Cartographers, yes. And then this one, all mm -hmm. three of those are in the same setting, universe, whatever. Yeah. I really don't like this one nearly as much as the other two. Mm. I really I just feel like, like I'm being a super negative. So, okay, let's get to something I can they say something like good blind, about. You didn't like the blind, you know, the placement stuff like that? Not. I don't know. Really? This okay. one just didn't work for me. Interesting. To be okay. fair, you were taught that under some of the worst circumstances of any game okay, being well, taught. Okay, that's it. But I don't know that you would love it. But if you... You guys were... It wasn't you. It was Chris. They were recently playing Aladdin's Dragons. Yeah. And this is... Kind of a, a follow-up to sure, that. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. 
All right, here's this is the, big the biggest one. Kickstarter yeah. of the week. Yes, I don't know how I just slipped my mm -hmm. mind. It's not actually been on Kickstarter that long. Mm -hmm. It was just launched, but money! The mm -hmm. Witcher Old World. Now, this is from Go On Board. Their first game was Valhalla, right? I think Valhalla that's the name was the first one. Their and second game Titans. is Titans, which we have recently just pulled out. And I was excited because I was like, let's play the game from The Witcher's guy. Mm hmm. I'm now less excited for the Witchers. I was super excited about Titans, and I now... did not play that. By the way, I wasn't in that game because, as you can tell, I'm on the outside here. So, um, that's right. I'm going to slide over I'm a little still bit. Excited. The I am still excited. Well, about you love this. you like the Witcher in general. Yeah. yeah, and this looks great. Plus, I saw some of the videos that the designer made before this launched, mm -hmm. explaining a couple of the things in a little more detail, just from yeah. like a designer's point of view. Right. And it sounded really neat. Mm -hmm. This has some deck building kind of to it, mm -hmm. but it is very much just a part of the whole pie, right. which is how deck building needs to be, okay? Sure, sure, sure. Now, is this, I don't know enough about the Witcher theme. I, I, I know the, the TV show. Well, you're but to this, toss a coin at those figures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but is this based on a, one of the video games? Is it based on the books? I know there was books before that. This is actually, I think, the, I think this is actually based on new lore before the book. Right, I think that's the impression I got. That's why it's called the Old World, because I think it was supposed to be like a prequel to all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, when there were still a bunch like of witchers. Origin stories type Because yeah. technically, uh, Geralt of Rivia is the last one. Mm. Uh -huh. So yeah. you got to toss a coin to him. He's starting to toss a coin to you. <laughs> He's hungry as get out. He needs a little ham sandwich. <laughs> yeah, the toss up. Okay, so this has a bunch of other witchers, and it's in my this fault. game, I played this on, the, on the, our trip the other day. Yeah. During this game, they're all gonna die. Everyone's witchers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> this looks great. I don't know. I think it looks awesome. I love the world. I love the. You can tell. You can feel that it's inspired by their. There's sort of fairy tales, mm -hmm. the Polish kind of influence very much yeah. comes through yeah. for me. Uh, I think the look is great. I, I, again, like what I've seen. I'm definitely... I'm hoping it's good. This game is I big am. and grandiose. I'm, yeah. It's going to be weird, a weird thing to say, but I'm going to be pulling the current Witcher game out of the library. Yeah. Me and Z played that back in the day. We both said it was okay. We Back then our... The Portal game, yeah? Oh, yeah. no, no, it's from FFG. It's actually oh, FFG. FFG. Ignacy designed it. Got it, that's um, right. We gave it a, I gave it a six, which at the time was seal of approval, which is no longer, and, yeah. and yeah, it's not... I didn't love it, it was okay. It was it's okay. It's been so long. I yeah. might replay it if you pull it out. I meant pull it out to get rid of it. That's what I mean, and I might replay oh, it just oh, out see, of curiosity. Yeah. Sure, but I don't think that there's going to be... I, this one looks like it's going to be strong enough that people would play this one instead of that one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is... I don't know. I, I, I was... Would have been more excited, I think, if I hadn't. Because when the other thing is when we were learning Titans, I'm like, man, this sounds like it's going to be good. Yeah. And then a couple turns in. Okay, but I, I can't do that necessarily. No, I mean, you, you got to do it. But well, that's you have to go on. Yeah, that's true. I mean, is it the same designers? I think it, it is. It is the same. The same. Mm -hmm. ah, all right. Well, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. Vampire: The Eternal, The Eternal Struggle, which just keeps going on and on. Mm -hmm. Unleashed. Another big Kickstarter, 140,000. Mm -hmm. This always is very. There's this really loose line for vampire. The Masquerade. Yeah. The Masquerade with RPG, board game, yeah. card game. Like, yeah. we played that one board game, might as well have been a, yeah, yeah. A, the RPG in, in, in many ways. So, I knew nothing about this, but I think that the, the idea behind this particular uh, project is actually pretty cool. I, okay. The original game is a, is a Richard Garfield game, which yes. I did not realize. Collectible and, card game. And these are all games, or these are all decks that were created by the fan community after they, that game had kind of gone out of print. And so these are ones that I guess that are considered to be the most highly regarded, and they're getting them professionally printed, and what they stated in the video is, hey, we're gonna use this money to pay the artists that just did this of their own volition because they loved the, the theme and they loved the idea of the game, and hey, we're gonna compensate these artists who had just done it for free. That's a neat idea, I think. You get the games, right? I mean, you, you get, get the, the decks. decks. Yeah. Are these cards newly designed, or did they... Some of them date from, like, 2003, I think. So, like, they, these Are were, they, like, cards that Richard Gardfield, for example, designed? And I think he had nothing to do with these. Okay. Yeah, I believe that's the case. This is a... Again, I'm... I'm not interested in any which way. Me but either. 
I love the idea of resuscitating yeah. a dead CCG and bringing it back for those fans Especially who like it. Especially if it's the fans that are the ones that spearheaded it. Because this, to me, I, from what I can tell, this was all something that just the fans kept alive, you know, which is great. I have no interest in, in at all in it, but uh, some people obviously do. Yeah, no, that's a very cool idea. It gives you hope for something you like that maybe is gone right. to someday come back. Exactly. Or if you're, I mean, if you really are... You know, inspired to maybe pursue something like that yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a cool idea. Yeah, um, I never did play uh, Vampire the Masquerade back in the day. I know it was a CCG that was better with a, a group. Mm. It was not really one that was meant to be a two-player game. Yeah. So I never, I never got around to it. But that's neat. That's it for board game projects. What? Oh. We got a few more things. All right, before we jump into the non-board gaming stuff, let's go to Mark. Hey, folks. Welcome back to the Dice Tower Preview Recap. I'm Mark, and today we really only have one game to check out, which is Vermin Vendetta. So this is truly a backyard battle of epic proportions. All right, it's just bugs, but all very different bugs. You know, this is a deck builder, lots of really interesting strategy aspects to this one for sure. And the really neat thing is that all the different types of bugs have very different abilities and movement and different cards, different ways to enhance them as you build up your deck. Some really interesting deck building aspects to this one as well. You'll have to check out the full preview to see more, but there's some really fun stuff. And I really like the spider faction. Definitely fun because they have webs and things like that. So definitely worth checking out. All right, folks, lots of new games and content coming in June, so keep an eye out. And if this game looked like it might be of interest to you, please go check out our full preview. And if you want your game featured as a Dice Tower preview, please shoot me an email. All right, folks, until next time, we'll see you at the table. All right. I do like that. I like the, the whatever that, it's like a beetle, beetle or yeah, whatever, yeah. it's like, yeah, yeah, he's gearing up because he knows Mark is right. And he's there. like, he seemed like he was mm. tapping his foot. He was about to break into song. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at Brick Mini Nano Soldiers. The second, the second wave. Yeah. I love these. I think I they're knew really you, cool. I knew you would be into this. I mean, yeah. I like that they're tiny and they fit under brick things, but I also like that they use the same models. Yeah. That I mean, the same poses. Sure. As the original. If you like bought a back of army man army back man, in the yeah. day, which mm. it was always annoying because you had to, <laughs> there's always a couple guys you're like, that guy's in a walkie talkie. Yeah, the walkie talkie guy always gets thrown into the sandbox. No one wants that. No one wants the walkie talkie like, guy. Come on, man. I want the guys like pointing a gun at right. somebody. Exactly. And there was way more mortars in World War II than yes, I knew about. Apparently so. That but anyway, I, I think this stuff's cute. It's it is cute. It's, it's just a very they're really idea. tiny, and they mm -hmm. I could see them for folks that want to build a. Like a diorama kind yeah. of thing, right? I, I'm guessing that's what I it's could for. see a board game being made right. of this. Actually, yeah. Yeah. you also could buy a diorama in this uh, project I saw for that two beach. grand. That beach one is really cool. I mean, I definitely would pay how much? I think it was around two grand. Pass, hard <laughs> pass. Wait, where is it? <laughs> Keep going. Keep well, you're going. going to have to it's go. Very nice. Yeah, I don't know if they'll. Yeah, they'll have. No, the they show it. It's really cool. Keep that. going. No, no, it's further down than this. How much is that one? This one's by five hundred, I think. I, I want that. Keep going, Tom. That's really cool. Four hundred. Okay, here we go. Now you got wow. two grand. Two. That's not worth two grand. Thousand. That is not dollars. worth two grand. Does it come pre-assembled? Oh, well, I wouldn't want it pre-assembled. Half the fun is putting that stuff together. Yeah. What's the other half? The other half is two thousand. The he other just half told you. is earning the two grand <laughs> that you spent for this. It's going to sell your plasma to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Man, they pay a lot more for plasma these days than when I was in college. I was talking to my daughter about it. I was like, I got 20 bucks. She's like, oh, it's well over 100 now. Wow. It's like, what? I never sold plasma. Me neither. Z, you want to go? I was Let's really poor it. in Let's college. Go. Why are we sitting on plasma? We're not using it. I'm That's not right. using it. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, using your plasma? All right. Anyway, I think this is really <laughs> cool. All right. Next. What's that guy doing? Lounging? <laughs> more cool stuff. <laughs> the complexity of pop-ups. Yes. I was, as a kid, still, I was always amazed by pop-ups. And even now, if a board game has pop-up in anywhere, I'm like, ooh, that camo up board. You're yeah. like, and the tree comes out, you're like, yes. Are you more likely to buy a card for somebody if it has something that pops up in it? Or oh, less likely? we were just at Disney Springs. Yeah. And there's those cards with the pop-up things. Yeah. There's a whole store for that. I love them. And they had, like, bouquets of flowers you can buy now, ooh. which I almost bought one for the studio. Then I thought, why? Yeah. Um, but I... I so almost sweet. I almost exclusively buy those for my wife now. She likes them that yeah, much. Yeah, they're great. I think they're they really cool. They just look really cool. Have you seen them when you open it? Oh, you were with me when I bought it the first time. I told I'm the one who told you to buy it. 
And I did. He's like, get that for your wife, fool. <laughs> I actually bought three and then saved it. Each year gave her one. It was, it was Why would you say that publicly? Mm. That's not bad. You're supposed to think of her at the time you buy it. You're not supposed to stock up. I thought up. of her triple time. You still need me, clearly, young <laughs> Padawan. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this looks cool. Oh, wait. Do you have the, do you have the, the survey up? Not yet. Oh, you're going to do it after this. Okay. I oh, yeah. You... Okay. I'll put the survey up now. Here we go. Yeah, these look Surveys really up neat. now. Don't look. Surveys. Look, surveys up. All right. Okay, here we go. Complexity of pop-up. Yeah. Yeah, this is very cool. I, I really yeah, like this. It seems neat. They, yeah. they basically, you get to see how they work. They mm -hmm. talk about the history of it. It's from a couple of guys who are paper architects. Yes. Which is a cool sounding job. And then right. they show you all the sort of, sort of different ones. It's a follow-up to a, pr a previous book. Yep. Where they had already, you know, had done something like this. It's neat. Again, small audience, mm -hmm. very much a curio kind right. of book that you leave yeah. on a table, sure, but you know, you coffee to, table. If you knew how to make this stuff, yeah. it's like learning calligraphy. Sure. I'd be like, I made you a card. It's a craft. Yeah. I mean, it's a skill. Yeah. And yeah. I think that like there's like four of them that come in the books that, that you can actually put together, make too. Them, yeah. So it's neat. I think it's a neat idea. You know what this is? A super unique gift. Oh, you're not someone. kidding. Yeah. Somebody that's in like the craft. Somebody who has or, everything and they're crafty. Yeah. This I'm half a mind to buy this for gift. my kids, mm -hmm. my you, older kids. For sure. All right. You got to get a, one for your wife and be like, make your own cards. This is a, <laughs> this is half. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard that. All right. This is half cool, half weird. I think it's all cool. I think Songbird this is a really good idea. idea. This is the thing about this one. Uh -huh. You have to like two, th two very specific <laughs> but very distinct things. You do. A lot. Yeah. It'd be like, I'm really into uh, sneakers. I'm a big fan of sneakers. <laughs> uh -huh. And Paper I love craft. Twinkies. <laughs> and okay. there's uh, somehow, like, those two things somehow yeah. correlate. Here, yeah. you have to be a big fan of 3D printing. Mm -hmm. And music. you have to be into, no, no, not just music. Music. You have to be into vinyl. I guess, but I think if you're into music... You're a hipster and you know it. That's what I'm saying. I don't own a turntable. But well, now uh, you will. Now I will. I, I don't That's know. That's kind of cool, though, I that you can 3D. Idea. Now, I want to know, not from these guys, mm -hmm. independent verification of how good it sounds. Correct. The other thing is, and I, I don't know, I saw this on a commercial somewhere. Apparently, something exists where there's a free-floating, like the, the, the actual disc floats above a turn, like... like I've seen a picture of it somewhere. I don't know. That it's got to be real, Z. I saw it somewhere. You saw it Actually, on the internet. So when, you look at this, when you look at this mm -hmm. outside of anything else, I thought it was a, a drone. <laughs> yeah, it definitely has that, that, uh, that. It looks like a drone right there, yeah. Now, I will say, since the 3D printing uh, experience we've had here with the Dice Tower, uh, this worries me a little bit. That's a lot of work. Yeah, you gotta put the you, effort into it, though. Yeah. It's a hobby. You could apparently buy everything pre pre done and you just put together, but it's not What's cheap. That point, just get a get a. I'm gonna buy this. Right? And you I'm gonna get people, a, you three pre. I'm gonna start printed. pirating, pirating LPs. Oh, I like it, Tom. Huh? It's 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 not cost effective, right? At all. Yeah. Mm. Do you like? You have to create a technology that copies a disc, mm -hmm. it scans it with a high-powered scanner, uh -huh. and then you 3D print a vinyl record <laughs> from that image, ah. and then you play it, and it's the Beatles. <laughs> yes, <laughs> All my <laughs> All right, let's move I on. It. I love it. All right, magnetic vlogging mic. Now, you guys were pretty pumped about this one. Charismike. I just think it's a neat idea. I Only because as soon as I saw this, it's a magnetic, you know, the badge, uh, they call it, which I've always thought of them as pins, but uh, I know that in some parts of the world they call those badges. Um, I thought it would be neat if we had Dice Tower themed one. No, I think that's a cool idea. Me yeah. and Roy, we were all talking about this one beforehand. The, mm -hmm. the problem is, is is the mic good? Probably I not. Like, it's I 40 like bucks. the magnet thing. Yeah. Now, if the magnet thing works with other mics, like if I could take that clip and put mm -hmm. it on this mic, for example, this is a sure microphone. This is a, a good microphone, yeah. despite the bad way I use it often. <laughs> um, Man, the magnetic badge under your clothes and stuff. Yeah. I really There's, like that concept. I agree. I think this looks really cool. You put cool. it here, you just clip yeah, it on. Just clip it on there. It's My only concern so with this is every time you see these that looking really cool there in any of these pictures, the microphone is under the clothing. Right. And you know, anytime you get your microphone yeah. even close to your, your tie, even close to a you know, your 
your uh, the neck of your shirt, your lapel, you start getting noise yes. from it rubbing up against the fabric. Mm -hmm. You're telling me all these people put their microphones here. Oh, here we go, folks. Get ready. And just like move around and stuff, and this isn't gonna be messy. Yeah, I, 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 to me, it would be better if the microphone was. <laughs> yes. Well, for police work, though. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, no, but. Ooh, that's a nice pen. You remove it, and the microphone falls. <laughs> <on your shirt. laughs> Can I see that pen? No, no, you cannot. Uh, it's going to have to come off. It looks magnetic. It's not. No, it's stuck to my body. <laughs> if I remove it, blood will come pouring out. No, but the idea of this, uh, back, one of the most successful projects from Shark Tank mm -hmm. is that is that little magnetic clasp that you, hangs your glasses on your shirt. Mm. It was just like a little pair of hard magnets. I mean, and they sell it everywhere. CBS, Walgreens, mm -hmm. and all that. I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's like for glasses, but you can like just stick it on your shirt and hold. Okay. So okay. I, I know people bought it who never even watched Shark Tank. Sure. That concept could work. Magnets isn't a neat idea. Magnets are, you know, they're a thing. There's no doubt. I think it's a neat idea. Again, like you said, I, I wonder if the mic is any good quality because it's relatively inexpensive. I think why, why did they change the, the guy in this <laughs> picture, though? <laughs> That's a good question because they have the same undershirt. Like they're dressed the same almost, right? right? They're yeah. just showing you one, you're doing it with theirs, and then some other sucker mm -hmm. not using their <laughs> microphone. That guy even has time Look, to take a sippy cup. He doesn't even have anything to drink. And enjoy this guy. a beverage. <laughs> Look at that. Look at bland, you can't even drop it all. It's has outrageous. this ever happened to you? <laughs> has this ever happened to you? <laughs> Look, he's laughing at him. The charisma guy right, is just right. getting a big kick out of this idiot. Folks, I'd like to apologize. What a what Last a week. Last week, I said Fingerbot <laughs> Kickstarter had ended. Yeah. Yes. But I was I was right and wrong. Fingerbot had ended, but Fingerbot Plus, oh. the one we've been talking about, still has 14 days left. Fingerbot, Fingerbot. This is the Kickstarter that never ends. Fingerbot, Fingerbot. Did you think of a new use for Fingerbot yet? All right, well, let's think. Coffee um, maker, printer, washing machine. Like, why would you need it on your printer? Like, we're already wirelessly sending things to a printer as it is. That's true. You can use your you Fingerbot really to printer? start your 3D printed turntable. That's one thing you could use it for. Yes, yes. Uh, you could use it to attach your Keras mic to your lapel. How? Is it going to crawl up your body? No, no, you just keep it here. Just, <laughs> just, one of these. just leave the finger right. on yeah. you. <laughs> there we go. I'm good to go. I actually have not taken the time to think of what I could use it to do. Mm -hmm. But well, I'm sure I could come up with something. Don't worry, there's still 14 days left. Lots of time What's to What's the think difference of? between Fingerbot and Fingerbot Plus? That's the question that's burning on everyone's mind. Well, I, think. I don't know. I, I'll have to look Ooh. it up later. Let's, let's see what finger people bot said. Fingerbot on a fire extinguisher. Let's see what people said here. Let's look at the results. Oh, wait, we should do what we're going to do first. Don't look. That's all right. I I, they're not getting, I'm, uh, I'm not picking the Witcher. All right, Z, what that. are you picking? The Witcher. <laughs> 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 well, you really like the Witcher franchise. I know you do. Yeah. I do, I do. Yeah, this looks very cool, man. Um, I like it. Like I said, I already saw some, I was compelled enough and interested enough to watch some of those videos before this ever went live. So I knew I was interested. Mm -hmm. And now seeing the entire package, the way it all sounds, the look, the the vibe, the you know, it looks immersive and interesting. My fear is there are a lot of big games, okay? And they're hard to get into. They're invariably, you know, they, they take up a lot of room in your head, room on the table, they take up your time. The more of them that they keep coming out with, the less room, space, literal space, and otherwise that you have for these kinds of right, games. So right. it'd have to be really impressed for me to make space for something like this personally. But I'm tempted, man. Mm. It looks great. So, yeah, that's my pick. Look at that guy. Look at that. Look at that. Mm. All right, Mike, what about you? I'm going to go with uh, Z's, what I thought was going to be Z's pick for sure, which is the Paperback Adventures. Uh, Z back. was such a big fan of that. So <laughs> Toss um, a coin to your dictionary. Yeah, I'm hoping this is good. I, I, uh, I, I think it could be good. I like word games. Uh, I liked Paperback. I love uh, Burgle Brothers. So I'm, I'm hopeful that this is as good as it could be. I think it could be. I have no idea what you're picking, Tom. I would. I, I'm. I'm down between two different ones. Okay. Okay. Let me see. Go through them again. What are they? Well, here, um, well we got. Start with catastrophe and work backwards from there. <laughs> I consider the sound, both, both of the expansions. The gelatinous actually. cubes. No. Oof. Catastrophe. Oof. No. Tessie no. Mussie. I, I consider Joseph's. that. No. No. This. No. 
Mosaic. Maybe. Mosaic, what's Mosaic? That's the Glenn Grover one. Well, I'm just saying it now. Mosaic is my thing. Yeah, it's yeah, really okay. close. Yeah. The other one was the lockup expansion. Yeah. Because uh, I really uh, like that. But Mosaic, I always have a hope mm -hmm. for a good civilization game. Yeah. It's like this hope I've been hoping for 20, 30 years now. Come right. on. Yeah. Where is my good civilization game that doesn't take forever to play? Right. That's my hope. Also, when it looks nice. Yeah. I know all you folks who love those Civ games, most of them just don't look good. And most Civ Though games I guess are, we put one up here are Civ us. themed. You know, like you like that Dominations, but that doesn't feel like a Civ game. No, know? no, and that's right. Like I like Dominations, I like Monumental. Right, but they don't. But they're both good games. But they're not themed. the actual Civilization right. Right. theme. There's a Civilization setting, mm -hmm. but not the theme. Ooh, yeah. Somebody's been doing some, some playing some paperback adventures. Yeah. <laughs> Building up that vocabulary. Ah, you know, ooh. the distinction between them. Mm. When you splay the cards <laughs> this way, you're a jerk. Mm. When you splay them that way, you're now playing right, by let's yourself. Let's look at the auto-refresh <laughs> results for the people's choice. Fingerbot came yes. in third. Oh, Fingerbot. Finger Finger but the winner, bot. Bing -a -bing -a the winner is The Witcher, the people's choice. Clearly. The Witcher Old World. Over four, almost four and a half million dollars, and by the end, it's going to be over five, I think. Yeah. That's Second place was amazing. Mosaic, mm -hmm. then Finger Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Then the Tussie Mussy expansion and yep. the Lockup expansion and Paperback Adventures. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the Brick Nano Soldiers got a few wow. votes. A lot of games got only a yeah. few votes, though. So, mm. yeah. No one voted for that Songbird 3D print turntable. That's too bad. This was definitely the Witcher's Week. Although, now that we've said this, the Mosaic has almost caught up to it. Yeah, Mosaic's yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, got a lot of people excited. Yeah, well, big projects are big for a reason, right? Sure, so. of course. And, and there's some big projects coming down the pipeline, folks. So... Next couple of weeks, I think we're going to be talking about if some If you biggies. find weird or cool or both projects, non finger bot projects, <laughs> send them to me at tom at dicetower.com and they might make the show. Mm. Um, as always, we take a look at games that are ending in the next eight, nine days. So if you didn't see it this one, it will likely show up in the next one. We know there's some really big projects on Kickstarter right yes. now. Yes, Although yes, I think yes. The Witcher is the biggest, I think. Yes, I'm pretty That's, sure. Well, it's got some. T it's got a few days on other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. But sometimes huge projects come out and all that. Right. So anyway, that's it for today, folks. We'll be back tomorrow. We're doing a top ten. The top ten games that are beautiful on the inside. Mm. And only the inside. Mm -hmm. There's also a breakfast, isn't there? Yeah, I guess there's board game breakfast tomorrow. Yes, mm. if you want. All right. Ten o'clock, board game breakfast. <laughs> sure. Will we talk about the news? Huh. I'll see you. We'll see you all. That I just thought of something. Sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Tom Basil. I'm curious. And I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun with The Witcher. No, that's, you can't yeah. have fun with The Witcher. I'm a curious cat. Meow. <laughs> <laughs>